Okay, everyone, uh, please take your seats. We're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Please stand, everyone, please stand. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending the first meeting with John Walsh Breakfast. I deeply appreciate you all being here. John. Oh my God! How are you doing? Today is, it's, it's a great honor. Today, today it's a great day to give honor a great man. We're fortunate to have John's wife, Johnny, here. The son of Coleman and his wife Rebecca. Thank you for being here. Just got a quick story about John, then we get right into the program. I met John back in the 90s, um, working on a campaign, actually, uh, it was the Shannon Ryan's race for governor, and John was a coordinator for Plymouth County, and I was a coordinator for Suffolk County, and uh, we have the treasure with us today, actually, um, Shannon O'Brien is actually here, thank you Shannon for all your support, you fantastic, we appreciate it, thank you. It, it, and so, for, for being like, a long time supposedly, John and I were friends ever since the, that campaign. We actually worked, I actually worked with John's wife, Donna, for about 10 years. So it was a long time ago. But uh, um, John, I want, John, we know he was a political genius, but um, a lot of it with him, he was a very kind man. And being in politics, get to, get to know John. And John would have certain positions where he could help people. And I was involved um, a lot with charities and people in substance abuse, I'm originally from South Boston, and uh, I would reach out to John and somebody would call me and say, you know, my son's this situation, or my daughter that situation, and uh, I called John up and say, you know, John, you know, you think you could help this person with this? And John would say, well, let, let me see, you know, this or, you know, or this or that, he said, let me see, let me see what I can do. And uh, John would call me back and say, you know what, I, I can't do that, but you know what I can do for that person? I can do this. And it turns out that this he talked about was 10 times better than what the person was asking for in the first place and to help people. And he was always there, and it didn't want any fanfare. I'd say, thank you, John. Whatever I, no, no, thank you very much. Uh, whatever I could do to help you, uh, just let me know. i took my phone call away. And when I ran for this two years ago for the Plum County Democratic League chair, the first phone call I had the next day was from John because he really thought a lot about the league. Um, John was a strong supporter of the league, and he so generous with his generous with his time. Um, if you need anything, he would say, "You know, use my name." You know, there aren't too many people around that actually talk like that. You know, he was he was just the kindness of him. Um, it gets sometimes we'll show, but his political genius. I know that him to be in such a, a kind man, um, and that's I want to uh, just acknowledge that here today. Um, and I just want just a couple of quick um, thank yous that are necessary that. Help this event. Uh, we have Dave O'Reilly, who's our events coordinator on our boards. It's so much. <laughs> Dan Powell, Dan Powell is our social media officer. He's done a great job, Dan. Thank you so much. And um, Roger Woods, our treasurer. And then, um, most and foremost, most important person in my life, my wife Susie. Well, that was really cool. All this. Um, as, as we know, it takes, it takes away from, it takes away a lot of your time at home when you're on these campaigns and stuff. But we love it, and that's what we do. But without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce the person who's going to talk about 2024 here in Clinton County. Um, and try to talk about what, what, what is going to happen down here. Um, I'd like to please introduce the secretary, of the Commonwealth, Bill Galvin. Thank you very much, George. It's great to be with Plymouth County. 
Who knew that the Plymouth County League, when they said we're going north for the weekend, was coming to Quincy? <laughs> That's the way it is. Well, listen, I'm going to be very brief because, as I'm sure all of you know, today is the kickoff of early in-person voting for all our state. Yes. And the event that's going to do that is going to be at 11.30 this morning in West Roxbury, so I must be there. Uh, I want to thank Senator Markey in particular. When I explained my predicament to him, he graciously volunteered to let me go ahead of him, and I very much appreciate it. But I did want to come to Plymouth County, not because of my long-term friendship with so many of you, but because Plymouth County, I think, is one of the places in the state, and I think we can say this honestly, where the challenges of dealing with Republican opposition and opposition in general is greatest. And where you've always had the issue, you have to compete. Uh, there are other parts of the state where it's a little easier. In a time of declining party enrollment, lack of interest, the challenges that we all face, you guys and you ladies and women have the greatest challenge to deal with. And it's reflected in the quality of your candidates, which we see, and we're seeing again this year. You have a lot of political action coming up this year, and it's very important. I want to point out to you, which I think you already know, the importance of the changes we made in election laws, in particular, early voting. You know, when we were not for the pandemic, we would not have had early voting that easily in this state. But what we discovered four years ago is that we were able to do it, and we did it well. And we've shown the country how it can be done. And we've done it, and we consistently have done it. Now it's an opportunity, not just for our citizens to be able to participate in every election, but it's an opportunity for those of us who are concerned about declining enrollment and, dis and lack of participation to do something about it. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, when our party reclaimed the Santos seat in New York, they did so because of the early voting. The early voting. when they got that overwhelming snowstorm we all suffered with, they still won. And that's the point. The other side, Republicans, have this hesitancy about it. We should take advantage of that. Make sure that all the persons that you know that for whom winning the presidency, which is really what we all know we have to do. I mean, we know the way things look right now, that we're going to have a lame duck as president who whoever's elected. We just don't want Daffy Duck as president. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, what we've seen so far this year is just amazing. But don't underestimate it. Let's not. That was done before. Let's not do it again. The tools are there. My office is happy to help everybody work with the tools that are there. We're kicking off today early in person. Early by mail will be available. Let's make sure that every citizen of this state has the right to vote, and let's make sure that we encourage them to vote Democratic, and we give the tools to people to get it done, so that we're not just victorious in Plymouth County, but throughout the state and up and down our ticket in 2024. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you very much. Uh, it is my pleasure to now introduce uh, U.S. Senator Ed Markey, consumer champion and national leader on energy, environmental protection, telecommunication policy, and the Green New Deal. Please welcome our Senator, Senator Markey. Thank you, Thank you George. Thank you for your great leadership. Um, this is uh, a great day. Standing room only, Plymouth County, uh, up and at them, ready to go, day one, early voting. Celtics are in first place, we can celebrate that, but we got to make Plymouth County number one uh, this year in the election cycle. Let's go and get that done. Um, it's a special honor today because this is, without question, you know, uh, John Walsh's day. And, and what a gathering, what a gathering. Um, we're joined here by my indispensable partner, someone who on the Senate floor every single day when she stands up, people back up. The great Elizabeth Warren, we gotta get her re-elected! We gotta get her re-elected! That's what the essential. Up! Do the work! Let's get out there! Let's get out there! And uh, just this incredible gathering, I know Steve Lynch is here, just a warrior every day on the floor of the House of Representatives. Um, we've got Lieutenant Governor uh, 
Kim Driscoll, Diana DiSoglio, Billy Gallivan. We've got Mark Pacheco retiring, I can't believe it. John Keenan, Mike Brady, everyone is here. Joe Moschino, Dylan Fernandez, Kathy Lanatra, uh, Rita Mendez. I mean, this is incredible. We got everybody here. It's just absolutely incredible. And, uh, and we're joined um, by everyone who loved um, John Walsh. And I had the honor for five years of having John run my very famous campaign in 2020. And for those two years, he was absolutely incredible, a genius. Just my proud honor to be partnered with him. And then for three years, I talked John into coming to Washington, D.C. to be my chief of staff in Washington, D.C. every single day. They had not seen his likes in Washington before. And so it's just, it's just a great honor for me to be uh, here with you today uh, as you honor John. Uh, and his beautiful family is here today. His wife Donna, his son Coleman, his wife Becca. And, um, Donna, Donna always says, Donna always said that uh, the happiest day of John's life was the day that Coleman was born. And today is Coleman's birthday. So let's sing happy birthday with John to Coleman. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Coleman. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, John, John loved Plymouth County. It's where he was born, it's where he grew up, where he became a political age. He was a selectman here and resident here. He knows their stories, their dreams, their struggles. They were central to John's commitment to justice and to fairness. For those of us who knew John, we saw the deep and profound level of humanity he brought to every campaign which he led. Guided by that humanity, he never faltered in his beliefs that the right thing would ultimately always prevail. And this inspired everyone around him to push through hard and uncertain times to victory. His generosity was endless, and his love of humankind was deep and abiding. John was a powerful personality, and yet he took up so little space in every conversation and in every relationship. People in politics usually bellow. John whispered. That's because he never made anything about himself. He made space for everyone else to be heard, to dream, to succeed, to thrive. He was a big man with a big heart, and that's what came across whenever he was with you. And above all else, John believed in people. He believed in you. He believed in the grassroots, and he watered the grassroots every single day. As John once said on election night, the strength of our nation is that at the toughest times, we turn instinctively to leaders who trust us, who believe in us, who know that we don't look to them for simple solutions. We don't look to them to give us the answers, but that we all take responsibility for being a part of those solutions and work together so that we can find them together. No matter your age, your background, your upbringing, education, or even worldview, John Walsh believed you are an important voice and that that voice has a vital role to play in making changes for everyone, especially those who are most vulnerable in our society. And today, more than ever, we need every single person in this room to use that voice for a change in this historic fight for our democracy because nothing less than that is at stake in this election season. Global temperatures, the highest in recorded history, an illegitimate Supreme Court and the Dobbs decision, voting rights restrictions, a handful of billionaires holding one and a half times
times more wealth than the entire bottom half of society of around $165 million, a broken healthcare system and hospital closures, and we're, not, and we're going to do everything we can to keep Good Samaritan Medical Center and Brockton open and to put a stop and put a stop to sacrificing people for profit. And by the way, yeah, this is a fight with Elizabeth and I, Steve, we're all going to be in. Uh, and by the way, of the, the spiritual successor to, to John Wall, Steve Carrigan right here, our, our great chairman of the Steve Carrigan. So these are, these are generational challenges that we face as Democrats and Americans. But I believe that under the leadership of President Biden, we are meeting that challenge. It is hard work, but we are doing it. When confronted with crumbling roads and bridges, we passed the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, including funding for two bright, shining new bridges here on the south. When confronted with repairing the damage, the Trump administration did to our energy, climate, and, uh, and health care systems. Democrats passed the Inflation Reduction Act, leveraging $350 billion up to $1 trillion for a clean energy investment in wind and solar, all electric vehicles, battery storage facilities, so that the United States and the, uh, and the uh, and, and Massachusetts can be the leader. The Republicans at Fox News are calling that socialism. What's a tax break for 100 years for wind and solar, all, and, and, and for, for uh, oil and gas and coal? I call that socialism. Give us some of that socialism for wind and solar. <laughs> so this is a period where we are seeing a dramatic increase uh, in uh, in focus on sustainable energy. Uh, we're going to make sure that there are union jobs, new union jobs in this entire sector. IBEW, Carpenter, is all the way down the line. The buy-in program so far has created 14.8 million new jobs in our economy, the most in history. Uh, it, uh, it, it is something that, for the first time, has made over-the-counter birth control pills uh, available uh, in American stores. Who did that? Joe Biden. Do you know who increased small business loans by 45% and directed 35% of all micro loans to small businesses? Joe Biden. Do you know who lowered the price of insulin to $35? Joe Biden. And we should go even further than that and lower it to $20 as soon as we can. Do you know who made uh, airlines pay up in cash when flights are delayed or canceled? Joe Biden. Do you know who finally made lynching a federal crime? Do you know who ended the ban on openly transgender people serving in the military? Do you know who made Juneteenth a national holiday and appointed the first black woman to the Supreme Court? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. And we know that this is by no means all the work that we have to do. But these are important achievements, and they represent what our Democratic Party and our values stand for. And where have Republicans been during all of this, during the fight for our economy and our democracy? They have been in the greatest political witness protection program in American history. We can't find them. They've done nothing to help our families and workers. And they've ignored the very real and dangerous threats to our democracy emanating from their very own party. They've blocked legislation to protect voting rights. They've blocked legislation to guarantee the right to an abortion. They've blocked legislation to ensure equal work for equal pay. They've blocked legislation to lower drug prices. When GOP wasn't standing for getting old people, Donald Trump made it stand for gullible on Putin. And the only candidate in the presidential race who needs a cognitive test is the guy who believes magnets work underwater and thinks it's okay for Russia to attack our NATO allies. He is wrong. Sadly, we know 
that Mike Johnson, Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, and his Republican Party aren't going to back down. Not now, not ever. And we have got a special message from Plymouth Democrats to them. We're not going to back down. Not now, not ever. Lowering prescription drug prices, universal health care, equal pay for equal work, pay family pay for all companies, for all workers, comprehensive immigration, gun safety, criminal justice reform, a livable future. That's who we are as Democrats. And that's the end of the in 2024. Because we will not achieve these goals unless we protect our Democratic majority in the Senate and take back the House this year. I know we can do it. We can have a successful President Biden, Nita Schumer, Nita Jeffrey, and John Ross. John Ross knew that you don't agonize, you organize. And we turn Eastern Plymouth County blue the first time in history. He knows you do it. That's door by door, person by person, because we can't afford to lose the legacy of John Rawls. So I'm here to ask every person today, will you stand with President Biden and Elizabeth Warren and the Democratic Party for opportunity, for justice, for opportunity? Will you stand with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in support of our workers and unions and their rights to organize and collectively bargain? Will you stand with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for criminal justice reform? We owe an apology to an entire generation of African Americans who are incarcerated as a result of the fair war on drugs. We will stand with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to pass universal health insurance. We will stand with them to make sure NRA stands are not relevant anymore in American politics. Ladies and gentlemen of Fort Kelly, in the name of John Wolf, let's go out there and organize and pray for more. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Senator Martin. Thank you. I see, I see uh, former state representative Jim Cantwell, Jim Cantwell is here from Marshfield, was now the state director for Aid Martin. Thank you, Jim, for always helping the league and, with that, and working with us and many others to get Democrats elected down here in Plymouth County. We thank everything you do for us, Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. Our next speaker is uh, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, whose life is working fight for middle class families and for structural change to transform our economy. Proud to introduce U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. Thank you. I'm particularly glad to have this chance to honor John in public with Plymouth Democrats. I met John 12 years ago heading into the 2012 election. I stood in John's shadow, literally as we went from town to town, from Democratic caucus meeting to Democratic caucus meeting, to talk about the upcoming elections. And I just want to remind all of you of the timeline back then. Uh, John had gotten Deval Patrick elected. Round of applause. <laughs> and then Democrats in Massachusetts had been badly shaken when Ted Kennedy died and a little-known Republican had won the special election of 2010 to take that Senate seat. And boy, a reminder of how elections matter. The loss to a Republican deprived Barack Obama of the filibuster-proof majority that he needed to get through the final version of the Affordable Care Act, and pretty much every single thing the Democrats wanted to deliver. And worse yet, it didn't look like we could get that seat back. 
In the two years that he had been in office, that Republican senator had become a national figure with huge fundraising capacity and an approval rating somewhere in the stratosphere. By this time in 2012, most people, including many Democrats, thought that Republican was unbeatable, but not John Walsh. John Walsh patiently explained to me and to every Democrat at every caucus or party meeting that we could win. He laid it out over and over and over that so long as we were fighting for the right values and we organized, 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 then we could win. And as John always made clear, it's not just about winning one seat, it's not just about the Senate seat, it's not just about the federal delegation or even the governor's office. It's about Democrats winning up and down that ballot. <laughs> John had a razor sharp strategic sense of how to build a winning majority. He believed and he showed that grassroots organizing was the Democrats' secret weapon. If we used it well, then we were unbeatable. John was a strategic wizard, but John was so much more. John was a good man. He was generous and kind and completely dedicated to making this a better nation. I will miss John, and I will miss his passion, and his integrity, and his determination. But I believe that John lives on in all of us, that he lives on in our organizing, and he lives on in our fighting for an America that works not just for the rich and the powerful, but an America that works for all of us. And John showed us that work pays off. That work pays off in just the last three years and what we've been able to do for hard-working families across this country. $35 insulin, a cap on what seniors spend on health care. Cutting costs and hearing aids, I'll say that one again louder. <laughs> but the way that we have been able to cut costs for families, and here in Massachusetts, with the help of Eddie, with Steve Lynch, with the rest of our congressional delegation, we just put the numbers together in the last three years, not even a full three yet, in the last three years, we brought $20 billion right here to Massachusetts. <laughs> In the 2024 election, we have a lot at stake. And John would remind us, we have a lot of organizing to do and we have a lot of work to do. So we're going to go out and we're going to knock on doors to protect the right of a woman and her doctor, not some right-wing politician and extremist judge, to make decisions about abortion and IVF and affordable, high-quality child care. And that we pay our child care workers at a decent wage. We're going to be in this fight for gun safety so that we can keep our children alive. We're going to be in this fight for health care, not just for some of us, but all of us, and keeping our hospitals open and accessible. And we're going to send text messages to get 
people fired up in the fight against climate change. We're going to stand up and get out the vote to bring down the cost of housing for everyone so everyone can afford a decent place to live. And I just want to say, this time, when we have the Democrats in the White House, in the House, and in the Senate, we are going to pass the Trumpka Pro Act so everyone has a real chance to join a union and build a middle class life. I am grateful every day to John and to all the people of Massachusetts who sent me to Washington to be in this fight. We've gotten a lot done over the last six years, but there is a lot more we need to do together. I just want to say, it is an honor to fight alongside all of you in the righteous fights. I am deeply grateful for every door you knock on, for every phone call you make, because you are making the investment in our democracy, in our children, in our future. Thank you all. Next, I'm happy to introduce our Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who our focus is building the Commonwealth with equitable, competitive, and affordable for every family, worker, and business. Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Marty Bams. How are we feeling today? Damn, Senator Markey, you got us all fired up early. You know, first thing I saw when I walked in, everyone's got one on their table. Like, doesn't that just put a smile on your face? That's why we're here, right? John Walsh, he knew the legacy of organizing, of making sure that we're working together. He knew that lifting up those everyday voices of people who are just going to work every day mattered in elections, whether they were local elections or nationwide elections. He knew that doing the work and bringing people together matter. Thank you so much for letting us celebrate him, raise some money for organizing, especially considering we got more open seats in Plymouth County than we've ever had. That means we've all got a chance to do more, right? To make more phone calls, to knock on more doors, to talk to our neighbors about why this election matters more than probably any in our lifetimes. It's the difference we can make, not only in his name, but in the democratic values that we hold so true. And I do want to recognize all of those openings were created by people who have been doing really great work for a really long time in support of this region. We've got Senator Mark Pacheco stepping down, the Dean of the Senate. Here's an amazing work. Senator Sue Moran next door, not here, but also stepping down after contributing mightily. Representative Cassidy out of Brockton, a very long time, a veteran, doing some amazing work. We stole Josh Cutler, sorry, but we need any more. Also an open seat, thanking him for his work. We know Representative Fernandez, also next door, trying to move up into the Senate. I'm also going to create an open seat. We've got a Governor's Council opening. We've got two Dems running for Plymouth County. Like, we have a chance in this region to make a big difference in developing those partnerships that matter. And Governor Healy and I know the value when we bring people together whether it's tackling a housing crisis, providing the sorts of resources we need for schools, building a Massachusetts that is a competitive, affordable, and equitable, and not just talking about it, but leaning in and doing the work, that means we need to have people in Washington representing us, like the amazing Senator Markey and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Go work hard to make sure that stays in place. The folks who are doing that work representing us in the legislature are true partners. Like the value of being able to have a shared vision for this commonwealth and then work arm in arm to go get it, you can't put a price tag on that. But that doesn't happen 
if we've got folks who don't share those values. That means those of us who are fortunate and privileged to be able to have some time to dig in and lean in, we're going to do that work. Not just because we know that John would want us to, but because it works in helping us craft the commonwealth that we all want to live in, be able to raise a family in, to be able to age in place with dignity. That's what democratic values enable. And we know when we put Democrats in, yeah, we think about how we can uplift families. We've had more resources coming out of the Biden administration than we have ever seen tied to fixing infrastructure, tied to making sure that we have resources that we need for older communities. Understanding, under, done with the hand wringing. This election matters, and we're all going to step up to support a president and administration that is delivering every single day. Think about where we were four years ago. Think about that for a minute, but where we are today. We know if we do the work, we're not only going to be able to have a better Massachusetts, we're going to have a better country. And that, to me, when I think about the work ahead, like Massachusetts can play a meaningful role in doing it because we are the example. We're the beacon. We're the place that leans in, whether it's the first public library, the first public school, when we actually get to work to build offshore wind, to develop a clean energy future, to, to develop life-saving vaccines, that's what happens here. And that's what other people are going to be inspired by. So please know that Governor Healy and I are in this fight every single day. Today, first day of early voting in Massachusetts, every single day from now until November, we're going to work to make sure we've got Biden in the, in the White House, Elizabeth Warren representing us in the United States Senate, and a Democratic majority here that remains in place. So today, you know, today we have some breakfast, we hear some inspiring remarks, but tomorrow, we do what John Walsh would want us to do, which is get to work. Thanks, everybody. Up next, we have an old pal of mine from the old neighborhood that me and my wife is residing. Um, he's, a proud older, he's a proud older than I work as union card still, I believe. Staunch supporter of the Democratic League and Labor, Congressman Stephen Lynch. Good morning, everyone. Great to be here. You know, there's a saying that there is loyalty in the simple act of remembrance. And so I just want to thank George O'Toole for remembering our pal, John Walsh. You know, that I, think, I think, thankfully, I think George and Steve Kerrigan are made of the same stuff that John Walsh was made of. And uh, John was a happy warrior. You know, he, he was a campaign dog in the real the real sense of that word, but, and, and he loved to fight. He, he just, he took joy in beating Republicans. <laughs> and that's, that's, there's no sin in that. There's no sin in that. But, uh, I, and I tell you, there'd be no sin in beating this bunch of Republicans that we're dealing with today. I know, I know there are a lot of speakers on this, this list, and uh, I, I'll, I'll be brief. I, and I, I am waiting, uh, gratefully and with great anticipation, to hear from some of our labor leaders like Vinnie Coyle, I think my brother from the Iron Workers Union, and, and Joe Byrne from the Regional Council of Carpenters. Uh, good to see labor here and having a speaking role because they do so much of the work on the street there. And I would be greatly remiss if I did not say thank you to my colleagues in the United States Senate, uh, Liz Warren and Ed Markey, for your heroic work on our behalf. I, I know how hard it is. And uh, God bless you both, and we are, we are blessed in this commonwealth to have your, your common sense and, and your, 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 your high ideals and, and, and your voices in the United States Senate, and uh, both leaders uh, of our parties in, in, the, uh, in the United States Senate. So thank you very much for your, for your leadership. We are at a, you know, it seems like every year I, I come to events like this, and I say, this election <laughs> is, is of the greatest consequence in my lifetime. But here we are again, here we are again at a time when democracy itself hangs in the balance. 
I'm embarrassed to say that. But, but here's where we are. I serve with a group of Republicans, and, and, and look, I'm a moderate Democrat. I've always tried to build bridges and, and work together, but right now we don't even have a shared reality with the Republicans that we have in the House of Representatives right now. We have crazy people, crazy people. <laughs> people who believe in Jewish space lasers, people who, you know, they're refusing right now. I'm speaking later on today at, at a rally for Ukraine, you know, beginning the third anniversary. Of when you think about America, when you think about what we stand for in this world, we export democracy. We export democracy around the world. We, we try to lift people up. That's been our, that's been our tradition in this country. And we rally behind people like ourselves that are just trying to, trying to enjoy the right as human beings to have a voice in, in their own government, right? To, to have the right of speech, free speech, the, the, the right to worship uh, the God of their own choosing, whoever, whatever, wherever that might be. But here we have a situation where Vladimir Putin, that gangster, has invaded a, a democratic nation. And yet we have people in, in the House of Representatives and every single Republican in the United States Senate voted against even giving humanitarian aid to Ukraine. And that is shameful. When you think about our fathers and mothers and grandfathers and grandmothers and what they stood for and what they sacrificed for. So this election is about saving America, about, about preserving who we are. We've, we've suffered reputational damage around the globe. I spent a lot of time on, on a couple of my committees, you know, visiting not only Ukraine, but Afghanistan and, and, and other countries, Somalia that, that are, 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 are ripped open by, by terrorism and, and, and brutality. And they all view America, the way they view America is, is the protector of freedom, the bulwark of democracy, the example for the world. We are, we are the exceptional nation. And much is expected of us. And right now, because of the positions, the crazy positions of the Republicans in the, in the House and Senate, they're tearing this country down. And so, this will require the very best of us. And I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I've seen so, I see so many people in this crowd who were with me in Iowa, you know, for, for John Kerry or Al Gore, and, as well as Biden, you know, in Michigan. In obviously in New Hampshire. We're going to have to do that again, but we're going to have to do it in spades this time. We're really, really going to have to get out of our own comfort zone. We know that, Ameri that, that Massachusetts will be for Biden, but we don't know about New Hampshire. We don't know about Michigan. You know, we don't know about Wisconsin. And we are the, we are the, the storm troops on behalf of democracy, just like John Walsh was a warrior. He was a warrior for democracy. He was a warrior for human rights. Well, he's, you know, in his, nothing would make John happier than if he knew that uh, his peeps, his people, uh, were out there Kicking Republican ass from coast to coast in this country. So that's our job. Nothing less than democracy itself hangs in the balance here. I hope we all realize that. And this is the, this is the moment. This is the moment. I mean, e either we step up now or, or forever, forever hold your peace. Because you, you know what's coming. Uh, you know, Trump has not hidden his intentions here. He, he will use the federal government as a weapon uh, against Democrats. He will, he will do exactly that. And he's got a coterie of...
Quislings. Quislings. Who betray their own country. Betray their own country for these crazy ideas that they have in their heads that have no basis in reality. So, you know, this, this, is, this, is a, this is a fight between good and evil. And we are right. We are right. We are right. <laughs> in closing, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for being here. Right? Thanks for, we are the shock troops of, of democracy, really. And uh, thank you for putting everything else in your busy, busy lives aside and, and, and coming here and, and tending to what is most consequential for the people that we all worry about each and every day. Uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you for being here, stepping up, and, 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 and most personally of all, honoring uh, John Walsh, who's, uh, whose presence is, and his spirit is here in all of you. God bless you all and thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Um, in the spirit of John Walsh, we haven't stopped even at this this event. There are sign in sheets in the back. Please sign for our uh, U.S. Uh, Senator Warren. We have sign in sheets for everybody. We think about Senator Markey. They're on the back there for elected officials. Please sign their sheets while we're here. Um, and uh, also, uh, we have a special announcement today, um, which we're very happy and proud to uh, hear about. And uh, please welcome uh, John's son, Coleman Walsh, who's going to announce the announcement. <laughs> for honoring my dad today. It means uh, so much. Uh, I've been my dad's sidekick at way too many of these breakfasts. Some of you are probably looking at me wondering where, I, where time went, but um, the idea that my dad, now that the cat's out of the bag since Senator Markey sang happy birthday to me, uh, the idea that my dad found a way to celebrate my 30th in a room full of Plymouth County Democrats is pretty funny. Over the last few months, we've been able to be at events with a lot of organizations that were near and dear to my dad's heart. Uh, there is none uh, more important to him, and I know this for a fact, than all of you here and the work that he did on Plymouth County. Um, I think a lot of them mentioned of the, the victories and the big uh, elections like Senator Markey and Senator Warren. Uh, I know him, and I know he'd want me to mention all the ones he lost, and a lot of those happened in Plymouth County as well. So, um, my dad never uh, looked at polls before deciding on an election and a candidate to back. He decided on a candidate uh, who believed in what he believed in. So, as a lot of people have mentioned today, uh, a big fight ahead in 2024 and beyond. I just wanted to make mention of that. John Walsh never strayed from a fight. Uh, he actually craved the ones uh, where it was an absolute uphill battle. So, thank you. Um, but yeah, as, as uh, folks mentioned, uh, on behalf of my, my family, I wanted to take a moment to announce uh, we are in the early stages of, of launching a fellowship program uh, in honor of my dad. Um, the program will uh, engage young people in a 14-month um, span uh, where they can hone their skills in movement building and social justice campaigns with a focus on innovative campaign techniques in my dad's spirit. Over the next several weeks we'll be seeking all of your input and support as we refine the program and start to recruit fellows. Our goal is to launch the first fellowship uh, in September of 2025 so we got some time to plan. It's so fitting that the Plymouth County Democratic League is where we make this announcement and will be the first uh, contribution as we kick things off. So, thank you all so much. Thank you, Tony.
So with that in mind, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the Plymouth County Democratic League Treasurer, uh, Roger, Roger Woods, who has an announcement to make as well. Thanks everybody for, uh, for attending. Um, I know all of you have been getting hit with emails with my name on them for a while now, and I'll be brief. You won't get any more, at least this week. Um, I just wanted to thank Coleman for his words, and I just wanted to let everybody know that this morning the league met and we voted that all of today's best proceeds will go to the fellowship to start the fellowship. We were going to get the vote just when everyone was here, but we knew that everybody in the room would agree. So thank you again for attending, and thank you for helping the fellowship. Yeah. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now we have our courageous state auditor, Diane, Diane Zarbio, uh, one of true courage and conviction. She was such a cause of pride in her fighting for transparency, accountability, and equity. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. There we go. There's the Plymouth County that I know and love. It's so great to be here uh, and to uh, to share in this uh, in this moment of honoring. Uh... There we go. <laughs> Uh, to honoring a, a great man. Uh, I was prepared to get up and to talk about some of the work of our office, auditing the MBTA, auditing DCF, auditing the uh, Massachusetts Con Convention Center Authority, auditing the legislature, uh, and the ballot question uh, that uh, I am working on alongside of you. Uh, but I'm not going to get too much into that this morning because uh, I was told two minutes, so I just want to make sure I keep everyone on time. Uh, but I did want to take a moment just to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do to support our democratic values. And thank you so much in advance for the work that we are going to all do alongside of each other this year to make sure that we are electing Democrats up and down that ballot to make sure that those values of transparency, equity, accessibility, and beyond are represented well here in the state of Massachusetts. I want to use my time this morning, thank you so much uh, for those amazing words for sharing the story. I have a story of my own to actually share. A lot of folks might not know my, my background and my history, but uh, I've shared a lot about being born to a 17-year-old single mother, growing up housing insecure, not really having accesses to resources growing up in the cities of Methuen and Lawrence. What most people don't know, though, is that after I did end up getting elected in my first election as a state representative, I was the Democratic nominee. It was back in, I believe, 2012. Uh, when I did get elected as Democratic nominee, I was a political newcomer. I had run against an incumbent. Uh, when I won that nomination, uh, it was very challenging to garner support from folks who were on the other side uh, in that, that race. And I know anybody that's been in a primary before knows how challenging it can be to get into those uh, unity meetings afterwards to all come together. And uh, I'm so grateful to a one John Walsh for reaching out to someone like me who was the youngest woman at the time uh, in the, you know, running for House of Representatives and for making himself available to someone like me. He didn't need to do that. It was not the popular thing to do at the time, in fact. And when he met with me, he asked me about how it was going, and I told him the truth. <laughs> and I said, not that great. I have a Republican. They are very well liked in this community. Uh, they are very intelligent. They have a lot that they're bringing to the table, and they have a lot of unified support, whereas the support that I have is a little bit more divided right now because of the fight that I chose to take on. And John, I'll never forget, uh, sitting uh, at a coffee shop in the city of Methuen, he drove out to meet up with me. He said to me, hey, let me tell you something. He said, I am going to work tooth and nail to make sure that you are elected because there is so much at stake right now regarding our democratic values. And you need to know that you and people like you, we need to show the state of Massachusetts that we as Democrats are able to come together for our shared values to make sure 
that we are uplifting our communities, that we are helping these working families who also feel like they don't have access and like they're not included in a system that they should be included in. And he did that, and I'm forever grateful for that. He showed me the true meaning of being a Democrat, John Walsh. So I today have this citation. from the State Auditor's Office. Whereas John E. Walsh was born on April 14, 1958 in Brockton, Massachusetts to Irish immigrants, John and Peggy Predenville Walsh. And whereas John was a graduate of Cardinal Spen Spellman High School and Princeton University. And whereas John's political career began in the town of Abington where he served on the Finance Committee and later served on the Board of Selectmen for more than 10 years. And whereas John led former Governor Deval Patrick's 2006 gubernatorial campaign to victory, his strategy from which has served as a model for successful political campaigns, as Senator Markey was saying, at all levels of state government. And whereas John served as chair of the Massachusetts Democratic Party for six years, working tirelessly to elect Democrats across Massachusetts and promote democratic values in state and federal government. And whereas John was committed to grassroots organizing, ensuring that all residents of Massachusetts have a voice in our government, regardless of background, bank balance, or zip code. And whereas Johnny Walsh was a mentor and friend to us all. And whereas on November 20th, 2023, John passed away and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts lost a beloved, passionate public servant and a powerhouse of political wisdom. Therefore, be it resolved that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts hereby recognize John E. Walsh and the Walsh family for their many contributions to the democracy of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and to the entire United States of America. And be it further resolved that copies of these resolutions be forwarded by the Auditor of the Commonwealth to the family of John E. Walsh. We love you. to touch upon a, a couple, of, couple of some of the things that Clinton Democratically does and some of the things we work on 2024. Um, PCL supports, we have an annual cult drive we do, we do a Christmas clothing event, and also the WATD Veterans Voice Monthly Food Drive. Our board member Craig Wolf, Wolfie, is, is co-host of Veterans Voice, and uh, the food, food is not just for the veterans, but for everyone in need. The PDL, PCDL is proud to support of this monthly event every month for the food drive we do. Uh, in the 2024 election cycle, we'll be meeting with Democrat down chairs and committees to organize and coordinate campaign efforts to plan standouts, form banks, door door, and, can and candidates and contact voters and build the support for, de uh, for Democrats. Uh, working with the Plymouth Coordinated Campaign Office uh, and offices throughout the Plymouth County. Um, and with that note, please, this leading up to, uh, please to introduce Steve Perry. Steve. <laughs> please introduce our leader, the chair of the National Democratic Party, a party. I want to thank for his contributions to this great event. And thank you, Steve, for working tirelessly to unify the party. We in Plymouth County need all that you, we need to be all unified 24 election cycle working together. Thank you. Thank you, George. Please give a huge round of applause to George. It's been a very long I, I, Since basically every word in the English language with xylophone has been said, I was going to use my time up here to fix the banner, but that just got fixed. So. Um, and then I was going to sing Happy Birthday to Cole, but that's all done. Um, so I will take just one second, because this is fantastic for all Democrats across the Commonwealth to see. So everyone smile. <laughs> so I will, uh, I will be brief, and by merely saying that is how you know I'm a politician. So I'm not necessarily going to be brief, but I'll try. Um, I want to start by thanking George, the Plymouth Democratic um, League. I also want to thank, um, we, uh, the Secretary made a small joke about it, but we want to thank the great people of the City of Presidents for welcoming Plymouth County to the City of Quincy. Thank you. 
and, and also, we can give a huge round of applause to the men and women and folks who put our breakfast together, who set these tables, who put these chairs, who work and go and work with all of our breakfast every day. Give them a huge round of applause and thank you. Um, I, my, my husband and I bought a, a very old home, which I don't advise, uh, unless you want to buy ours, which then you're welcome to. Um, uh, but we, we very much feel like we're the stewards of this home. And uh, I feel much the same of this part. Uh, I stand on the shoulders of great people before me, not the least of which uh, was John Walsh. Um, John taught us all um, the grace and dignity of leadership uh, through doing and through work. Uh, John taught us all the, the values of organizing and the impact organizing can have uh, on people's lives, and not just on elected officials. Remember, folks, when, when Democrats lose elections, and the congressman uh, alluded to this, when Democrats lose elections, people lose representation. People lose an opportunity to have their voice heard, whether it's in town hall where I'm proud to serve. I didn't realize, by the way, I was on the finance committee in my hometown. I'm on the select board of my hometown, and now I'm chair of the party. I am following John in every possible way, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but whether it's in town hall or the state house or in the halls of Congress, um, people need and expect that representation, not just here in Massachusetts, but across the country. And when we lose elections, people lose that. They lose that voice. Uh, and, uh, and I want to make sure that as the party chair, um, that, that I step up and do everything I can, not just to stand in the, in the footsteps of greatness of John Walsh, uh, but on behalf of all of you, uh, for whom I serve in this role. And I, I, I will, again, a lot of words have been said about what's at stake in this election. Um, and I will say this, uh, I am thrilled, um, by the way, Cole, to hear about the, the fellowship. I think it's going to be fantastic and will breed an entire generation uh, of activists. Uh, we are also, um, uh, President Kennedy once said uh, of Robert Frost, that, uh, or when honoring Robert Frost, that the nation reveals itself um, uh, not just by the men who it produces, but by the men, uh, people um, that it honors uh, and the people that it remembers. Uh, and so we are here to remember a great leader but more importantly to remember the work that he did and the work that he charged us to do. Um, so I am, I'm also honored to acknowledge, um, sorry, we're gonna fill up your schedule. Um, we are gonna be giving John a Roosevelt Award at this year's Roosevelt Dinner. Um, and I, uh, it is really, it cannot be overstated how incredibly important these elections are, uh, and particularly in this part of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, there is, uh, I joked with somebody, I've actually had two offers today to move into a spare apartment in someone's house in Plymouth County, uh, so I appreciate that, thank you. Um, I've joked that I'm gonna be living basically between Plymouth and Provincetown for the next year. Um, uh, my husband doesn't know that, so don't tell me. Um, but because it's critically important that we leave no stone unturned. I mean, today is the day you can start early voting, get on early vote, make sure you get on early vote, and don't believe anybody who says a presidential primary doesn't count. A presidential primary sends an incredibly significant message. Now, I'm here to tell you I'm the Democratic Party chair, and we have multiple candidates on the Democratic presidential ballot, so I am neutral uh, until 8 p.m. on March the 5th. Um, uh, but uh, regardless of your candidate, Joe Biden, Please get out uh, <laughs> and support great candidates like Joe Biden, uh, like Joe Biden. You don't have to necessarily support Joe Biden, but you should, if you want to. Uh, but Senator Markey, the Lieutenant Governor, Senator Warren, and all of our speakers today have given you plenty of reasons to step up and support what real leadership means. John Walsh represented real leadership at the state party, he represented it in his life in every way he, he did it. He also knew, first and foremost, he didn't need a title to do good work. You all show that each and every day. Um, my, folks, my folks were proud union members. My dad was a utility worker. My mother was an MTA member. Uh, so I grew up in a union household that showed us each and every day that if you have an opportunity to make a difference, you have an obligation to try. Democrats, I'm here to tell you, you have an opportunity to make a difference in your communities, this commonwealth, and this country. Now let's get to work and do the work. Thanks for having Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, our next guest uh, is going to be uh, a leader in labor. So, Plymouth Democratically, 
Thomas Gun Photography are board. We, we're pro union. Um, we have Doug Nelson from IBW 223s on our board, Vinny Coyle from uh, Ironworkers is on our board. We have uh, Paul Viola from Cottons is on our board. Uh, SEIU 88, we have uh, Anthony uh, Landry on our board. So we're, we're a big pro union um, organization, PCDO. And we, I'm very proud to. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to introduce the president of the AFL-CIO, Chrissy Wang. that works for everyone, not just the wealthy, not just the wealth connection. We all agree that the best way to grow the middle class is to organize more people into unions and negotiate strong contracts. But we have to balance that by being active politically and legislative to help elect people who share our values to protect the middle class, to grow the middle class. Labor recognizes the dignity of every individual, regardless of all the ways that the right wing uses to divide us by race, by gender, by ethnicity, by immigration status, by who we love, by sector. We try and ground people in the fact that work connects us all. In the AFL-CIO, the labor movement, we are the connected tissue that binds us together in solidarity, uniting us around those, com those common goals, livable wages, health care, retirement security, safety, training, a voice at work. And we are being very intentional about making sure that each of those goals have through lines that advance racial justice and gender justice. And that we are being very deliberate to make sure that we are empowering women, people of color, who have historically had fewer chances to hold positions of leadership within our movement. I stand here today as the first woman to lead the Massachusetts AFL-CIO. <laughs> I met the Mass AFL-CIO uh, from my time working with the Democratic Party back in 2004 and around that time, um, working mainly on campaigns down the South Shore. I did only labor-backed campaigns back then, um, and obviously still. Um, I remember at times feeling very overwhelmed. Um, I had a lot to learn. You know, there were so many acronyms, and there were so many local union numbers to keep track of, and every single local had its own jurisdiction, its own internal politics, its own key issues. And there were very few women in labor spaces back then and in campaign spaces back then. And I watched in awe and in gratitude as the union sisters in those spaces looked out for each other, how they looked out for me. There were also a lot of brothers who looked out for me, who went out of their way to help me understand their unions and their campaigns, who helped me find my voice and told me I should use it. A few of them are here today. I think you know who you are. I want to thank you. John Walsh was also one of those people. 
He chaired the state party at a time when I was, in, I was a political operative for the AFL-CIO and the labor movement, so we spoke a lot. He always tried to make sure that the party held true to the labor movement values that built the Democratic Party, and we are stronger as a state today because of it. Uh, to John's family, I mean, people have said it, but thank you for sharing him with us. Um, we are so sorry for your loss. Um, but please know that every big victory that our state has today and in the coming years, it's partly because John helped plant those seeds. He helped cultivate that earth, till the soil to have these victories. So thank you, Democrats. Um, we, are, we as the labor movement are proud to be in this fight with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chris, and thank you very much. I just want to acknowledge a couple of people that are here. Uh, Representative Machino is here. Representative Fernandez is here. Uh, Representative Kearney, Representative Dubois, Representative Mendez, Representative Ayers. Thank you for all being here. Um, our next uh, speaker, oh, not sure, I'm still going, I'm still going. I have the whole list here, keep going. Okay. Uh, Representative Lanatra. Um, also, uh, getting back to this, this program, uh, I'd like to introduce a board member who is a businessman to the iron workers. Um, tough job he has, um, but proud, proud union supporter of his, uh, Vinny Coyle. Good morning, all. Uh, on behalf of the Plymouth Democratic League, uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending the first Johnny Walsh breakfast. We have an election year coming up this year. The offices of the PCDL thought it would be a great idea to have the candidates beginning of the year come and speak. My name is Vincent Coyle. I've been an iron worker for 30 years. I'm a third generation iron worker. Business manager of the iron workers of Local 7, and I love what I do. I, along with the Plymouth Democratic League, are here for you. We are here to help the officials that believe in the democratic values, not like the dingbat that's running for office right now, wants to be a dictator on telling the American people what we can and cannot do. Not for me. The PCDL team, the PCDL team is here to help with coordinating your campaigns. As an officer of Local 7, we have many labor issues moving forward. Up to the north, we have the right to work back on the table in New Hampshire. Recently got defeated last week. Uh, artificial intelligence um, is already on job sites. Technology is changing at a rapid pace. A shrinking workforce, baby boomers are retiring. Uh, Votech schools are not able to open their doors to residents that live in the community surrounding that school. We need more Votech schools out there. Um, Jobs are being created, we need more votes. <laughs> Prefabrication on job sites, taking the work away from the workers. Companies having their employees working as independent contractors. That's a disgrace. Uh, and wage theft. A lot of wage theft. There's been a bill on the wage theft that's been in its ninth year on the hill. Still has yet to have no movement. The iron workers are behind what is called the PAGA bill. Uh, it's a private right of action. With this bill, it's a Cadillac wage theft bill. Uh, you do not need anyone to come forward. Any organization can help these cheaters who are hurting the Massachusetts economy. The taxpayers will not have to foot the bill. The cheaters are held liable. And this is another tool the AG office can utilize to make contractors abide by Massachusetts law. We need more leaders like Joe Biden. There are those who promise the world but cannot deliver a wall that was never built, infrastructure bill that was never passed. Uh, the last four years I've seen my annuity bounce back, an infrastructure bill that was passed, a boom in economy, jobs being created, and unemployment at its lowest. A president that walked the picket line. These are all great attributes of a democratic leader. And if you are a part of it, then we're there for you. 
The PCD officials are here to help your campaign once again. Local 701 with the PCDL look forward to working with our politicians that have the same values. Johnny Walsh, didn't know much about him, but I can tell you one thing is that a final comment I'd like to leave you with that I think he would, would adhere to. If you desire to influence and have an impact on others, <laughs> that's it. So last, one final comment, if you desire to influence and have an impact on others, you have leadership qualities. And if you can inspire people to do something that they could not do, demonstrate how the impossible is possible, believe in someone when they did not believe in themselves, you're already a leader. Thank you for your time. I got the power out here, but that's not going to stop us from saluting John Walls today. Nice. Up next uh, is um, a pleasure to me to introduce John Bur Burn. Uh, he's Executive Secretary of North Atlantic State Regional Carpenters. Uh, last time I checked, he was overseeing 28,000 carpenters. A very busy guy. And take, well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Joe. Thank you. Good, good morning, Bernard County. I have a couple pages here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shorten up my speech. Uh, there's been a lot of great things here said this morning about the Walsh family. Um, one of the greatest things I took away that I love so much about John Walsh was he was a natural born organizer, and that's what the carpenters represent. Um, as George said, I, I, I'm the executive secretary treasurer of the North Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, and I'll say regional because. We represent, represent the six states of New England and the state of New York, minus the five boroughs. Uh, before I go any further, I want to thank uh, the staff that, that's here that came out today, but more importantly, our uh, rank and file members right over here that came out to support the One of the most dedicated group of members that we have. Thank you, guys. And I knew John to be a great community activist, and he knew that if things weren't going well, you couldn't sit down and do nothing about it, right? You had to stand up and fight. You had to stand up to be counted. Um, and that's a lot like the cop. Is that I'm gonna just touch on two things. Vinny, Vinny touched on it just a couple days ago. We had about 100 union carpenters up in New Hampshire uh, fighting the right to work. Um, I wanna thank the Massachusetts legislature. That's one fight that we don't have to deal with right here in Massachusetts. No right to work. Thank you. And I think Secretary Galvin touched on this uh, about three weeks ago. I was in Long Island because I, I covered this, the, the Long Island area. Um, Steve Joyce talks about the replace the disgrace George Santos. Um, Congressman, our uh, now Congressman Swazi reached out to us and said, I need some help in this race. The polls were two points from him, two point differential. And just like today is the beginning of early voting, we went down there at the, the beginning of early voting, we put 1,000 union carpenters on site to cool off inside of Long Island. And, and Congressman Swazi pulled away with a 10 point victory. And that's a beautiful thing. So I would just like to thank uh, the Walsh family, as I said earlier, um, you know, John will be greatly missed, but his legacy will live on forever. And we're here, the Carpenters are here to support, I know we have uh, Senator Warren, uh, we have a race coming, the Carpenters are here to support any way that we can, and we greatly appreciate all the Massachusetts legislature in the room today, and uh, it's been an honor to stand here before you today, so thank you very much. Everybody. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to acknowledge we have uh, an attendance. Wilfield County uh, Treasurer uh, Michael Bellotti is here, and also a Brockton Mayor, Robert Sullivan. Uh, 
up next, up next we're going to have a person that's done a lot in labor um, and also in the energy space. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, moving on and uh, we'll get, let's have a few words for us. Uh, Senator Pacheco, I'll have to say we're going to miss you, that's all. Thank you very, very much, John. Thank you, Judge. Thank you so, so much. I'm glad you didn't say retired, you know. But I am, I am stepping back from the 3rd Bristol and Plymouth district seat. But I'm not stepping away from the Democratic Party. You're going to see me all over the state. Any place in the United States that Joe Biden wants me there, the same way myself and others and so many people in this room did for all of our Democratic nominees nationally. And it's so important, especially right now. And you've heard our leaders say it. But it bears repeating. Because our democracy is actually on the line. We have a candidate out there telling us what he's going to do if he gets elected. He's told us. He's saying the quiet parts out loud. We can't take this for granted. We can't. John Walsh would be up here right now telling us the same thing. I'm so honored that today Senator Markey had asked me to come over and sit at his table with the Walsh family. C. Coleman looks a lot different than he did about two, three years old going door to door for Mark Pacheco with John Walsh. And uh, I asked Coleman at John's services, do you remember going door to door? For me years ago, he said, no. <laughs> he said, I remember going door to door because I went door to door everywhere. That's what John did. For so many in this room, across the state, across the nation, he truly made a difference. He didn't win them all, but he won enough to make us all realize how important this all is, being a Democrat. So I have a couple of thank yous that I'd like to get out today after 36 years in the Massachusetts legislature. I want to I want to thank our congressional delegation. The Senator Warren, Senator Markey, Steve Lynch, who we ran against each other many years ago on 9-11, and I'm proud every time I see him on the floor fighting the good fight for labor, for fairness, for health care. Our entire congressional delegation, I'm proud to see a colleague I served with in the Senate as a whip now, as 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 a assistant speaker at the national level, Congressman Clark. We have an outstanding congressional delegation that fights every day, not just for Massachusetts in the nation, but to be one of those democracies in the world that is making sure 
the people had the opportunities that they have here that sometimes we take for granted. As we go forward, I want to thank labor, organized labor that has been fighting for those values every step of the way. God bless you. God bless you. For teach, keeping every one of us in elected office, and I can still say that till the end of this year, in elected office, making sure that we're accountable for working family issues. We need to do that. I want to thank everybody here in the environmental community. I want to thank all of those organizations that are keeping the most critical issue of our time. And it's not just about the planet. My friends, the planet will take care of itself. And she has already started to act to save herself. It is we, the human species, that live on this planet that will not be able to continue to live on this planet if we don't continue to do and fight for the issues that Ed Markey and Al Gore and so many in our party have stood up over the years and say, pay attention to what's happening with climate. We've got to save ourselves. We've got to save our future. We've got to save our planet. Yes. And I want to say thank you to all of those leaders throughout Plymouth County, going all the way back, in my, in my recollection, to somebody like a Jack Buckley, many years ago, John's dad, who was out there When, my friends, there were hardly any Democrats elected at all in Plymouth County. Hardly any. But we found out when we stick together, when we organize, as John Walsh taught us, when we work hard, when we get out there and do the work, when we bring labor in the environmental movement together, when we bring everyone together at the local level, when we work together, we win. We win when we work together. So, I just want to conclude by saying that we're going to have some democratic internal fights going on here over the next few months. Because we have a number of open seats. And we'll have Democrats running. But at the end of the day, those candidates that put their name on the ballot in the Democratic Party are not the enemies when we go into November. Let us learn the lesson that John Walsh taught us all. The night of that Democratic primary, we need to come together and pledge that we're going to put our shoulders together, we're going to put our backs together, we're going to work together to win and make sure that up and down the ticket, from Elizabeth Warren to every state representative and state senate seat throughout the state, on election night, we'll be celebrating the re-election of Joe Biden and every Democrat on the ballot. Are you with me? Are we going to do that? Are you with me? We're going to do that. If we stick together and work together and fight together, let's get it done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you very much. We appreciate all your work up in the Senate for so many years. Um, I'm proud to introduce now um, our Brockton Senator, Senator Michael Brady.
Thank you, John. And let's give a round of applause for John O'Toole and all the leaders of Plymouth County for honoring John Walsh and everyone here today. John and his wonderful wife, Donna, and his son, Coleman, and his wonderful wife, they, they have been part of our family. And, and as was mentioned, John Buckley's father started the Plymouth County Democratic League. Let's give him a round of applause as well. You know, I'm honored to be our state senator, and I had great senators who came before me. Michael Creighton, Bob Creighton, Senator Tom Kennedy, and Anna Buckley, and many, many other leaders in our district, and I'm very honored to be a part of this team. And I'm also grateful to Labor. I want to thank the Mass Nurses because they are fighting for our lives every day. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for our federal delegation. They've come to Brockton. We've got to keep the Good Samaritan Hospital open. And I'm not even going to mention that corporate raider who not only owns hospitals and masters up and down the East Coast, they only care about profits. They do not care about lives. And our firefighters are police officers. They're on the day fighting for our lives every day. For our lives. I wouldn't be here without the support of Labor. I'm a big union supporter, and along with our senators that were here, and I know John Keenan's here, and Senator Walter Timothy, and several others, uh, but we wouldn't be here as elected officials without Labor's support. They put their boots to the ground every day. They're out holding signs, helping us out, getting the vote out, and as was mentioned, today is the start of the elections. We've got to get every dog to vote, and if you can vote early, it helps you because then you can get out on the field during the election days to help out all our Democratic candidates. Because we've got to help elected candidates all the down, up and down the ballot. And um, I know Senator Markey, I believe, and I'm grateful that he's saying happy birthday to Cohen because I used to sing in bands, but he used to get me up there for last call and I want to clear the crowd out, so I'm glad he started singing. But uh, and I know Senator Pacheco as well, he was a, a good singer out there, but um, I'm honored to be here to support John Walsh and his family. They're a part of our family, and, and he, they've been out on the trail every day for us. I worked with his wife, Donna, and, and uh, they helped support all of us as well as all the leaders that came before them. And I'll see if Carolina State Party, we got to get the vote out. People think elections don't count. And we had a guy named Hancock in the city of Brockton, famous name. We're in the city of Quincy where the Hancocks were popular. A gentleman named Hancock lost by three votes because people didn't get out to vote. So it's so important we get out to vote. I, I know our good friend, Mayor, um, uh, I, I, Bob, Bob Sullivan, you know, we, we've been good friends, but, you know, we had a close race several years ago for the state rep seat, and every vote counts, and it's so important for people to get out to vote. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. we got to work together as a team, and I know we've got some great friends in the room, but we cannot take anything for granted. And our city council in Brockton and all the people in Plymouth County that are here in Norfolk County, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because without your support, I wouldn't be standing as your state senator. So I want to God bless you all. Get out the vote. And I'm so honored to honor John Ross and his great friend. God bless you. I know we want to get a politician on the tough thing, but we also want to honor our veterans because the governor put forth the most important heroes act to support our veterans, and I know the state senate and the House of Representatives are going to support that bill as well. The heroes act to support our veterans. Thank you to our veterans. Thank you, Senator Brady. Thank you very much. We appreciate the comments. I'd like to welcome next uh, Senator John Keenan, Quincy, uh, Quincy Senator, right in his district here, uh, who is a very a champion in the creation of housing. And we appreciate everything he does for us. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, George. What an honor to be here today, especially uh, in remembrance of John Walsh. Um, John used to come to the caucuses all across the Commonwealth. He'd come to the caucuses in my district. And when people went in, to be somewhat subdued. When they went out, after they heard them, after they heard John Walsh, they would be subdued, subdued, they'd be ready, they'd be ready to go out and fight. This past week, it's school vacation week, so at the state houses gets relatively quiet. So use this past week to get out and about in the district that I represent, which is Norfolk and Plymouth County. I represent the city of Quincy all the way from Swanham down to Hanover to the senior center where I was just the other day. And I'd just like to quickly Acknowledge 
my uh, colleagues uh, that represent the city of Quincy, Speaker Ron Mariano, Representative Bruce Ayers, Representative Kathy Shannon, and our friend from the West, and Milton Center Walker Timothy. Good work for a better group. And that goes for all those who serve in the House and serve in the Senate, the North and North Fork and Plymouth areas. One of the things that I heard from people as I was out this past week was an expression of concern, a real fear of what might happen. And as they talked about their concerns and they talked about their fears, what they were really saying, but they couldn't do it in a positive way because of the climate that we're in, but what they were really saying is what they believed in and what they were afraid, what they feared losing. And I heard from people who were afraid that books are being banned, and they'd rather see teachers teach and expand young minds. They made that quite clear. They worried about where things were going in terms of our workforce. And they see a commonwealth in a country where tradespeople, union workers, build housing, build schools, build infrastructure, hospitals, and workplaces for their children and their grandchildren. They want to see people working in our factories, our manufacturers, our union workers, our truckers, make and move goods that are important to our lives. And believe it or not, even in the North Fork and Plymouth District, they express concern about food and farmers. And they want to see farmers growing food that not only feeds their community, but feeds the Commonwealth and feeds America. They're worried about the MBTA and commuter rail and how they get from point A to B. But they have trust in the people who work the MBTA, the people who work for QOs, the people who are driving the buses, bringing communities together. They worry about their health care. And they made it pretty clear they trust their doctors. They made it very clear they trust their nurses. And they are concerned about losing hospitals. But they believe that we will and we must keep the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, in place at all costs. They expressed appreciation for our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, our EMTs. And they know that in their community, in this Commonwealth, they can pick up the phone, dial 911, and somebody will be there. They really, really are concerned that their children and their grandchildren won't breathe clean air. But they're optimistic because of what we're doing here in Massachusetts with offshore wind and what we're starting to do all across the country, that that air will be clean. They're worried about who's going to care for their, their parents and their grandparents. And they express confidence that those that are doing it now are doing an outstanding job, but they need help with wages. They talked quite a bit, especially among the seniors, about where we are and what our standing is in the world. One thing they didn't waver on is how much they appreciate our troops, how much they appreciate what our people are doing, how much our president is doing to bring peace to the world. They expressed concern about us, some of us as elected officials, more worried about personal political gain and more worried about partisan politics. And I'm glad to say that among those that I met with, that focus was on the Republicans. But they want to see people who put America first, not Republicans, not Democrats, nobody other than Americans. But they expressed the belief to me that the Democratic Party is the one most committed to that. And they talked about in America where there's no place for hatred, but there's no place for ridicule, no place for denigration. But rather in America where there is respect for everybody regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your creed, that everybody is treated with dignity and respect. They expressed some concerns and some fears about America, about this Commonwealth. But in doing so, what they were really telling us is that our best days lay in front of us. 
Not some sense of the past, but what tomorrow brings. They believe that we must come together to defend our Constitution and vote to preserve our democracy. We know that to realize the America that they hope and dream of, that we have a lot of work to do. And as John Wallace would say, let's get to it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Great job. Now to introduce, to introduce the mayor of the city of champions, uh, our, our friend and good supporter of the Clinton Democratic League, Robert Sullivan. Good morning, everybody. I, uh, first of all, I, I want to thank I want to thank George O'Toole. I want to thank everybody that has worked together to make this a fantastic, fantastic morning. I want to thank uh, the contingency, the Brockton, uh, the Brockton folks are over there. We have the uh, City Democratic League here today. We have the Firefighters 144 here today. You know, as a kid from the City of Champions, I wasn't even sure if I was going to get into the City of Presidents. I was a little weary coming up here. But well, we have such wonderful folks over here from Quincy, always ready, willing, and able to work with us. Let me just share three quick things, because I know time is of the essence. People have said John Walsh is just a fantastic person, uh, and that's true. And I'm not going to concur with that because he was born in Brockton, or because he was educated at Spelman in Brockton, or even because he was a Democrat, or because yeah, he was a last name Walsh, and I'm a Sullivan. You know why John Walsh was a special person? He cared. He exemplified what being a Democrat is about. I have a personal relationship with John. He stopped me one day uh, at the Shaw Center in Brock, and he didn't know me from Adam. I was a counselor at large, young kid, you know, and he didn't know me, but he pulled me aside and gave me about 15 minutes of his time. What you should be doing when you're a Democrat, how you leverage the base, your support needs to grow, you don't shrink your support, and it's all personal, right? Tip O'Neill used to say, all oh, politics is local. He wasn't joking, it is. And so today we come together to honor the man and his family. Uh, but we also have to come together to understand that right now is a critical point for the city, for the county, for the commonwealth, for the country. Last night in the Sullivan household, it's my wife Maria and our three kids, Tommy, Grace, and Will. And we're having pizza because it's Lent and as good Catholics, we can't have meat, right? So we're sitting there having a pizza party. And the news is on, and Will, our 11-year-old, said, Dad, how did that man in Russia die? I said, he was murdered. He was murdered by a tyrant. I think Stevie Lynch called him a gangster. He's a dictator. He's an evil person. And then Grace and Tommy said, but doesn't Trump support him? I said, absolutely he supports him. And then Will said, can Trump get reelected? And I said, no, we cannot, because we are going to work together to make sure that doesn't happen. We have to work together. And we will work together. We'll work together in Brockton and in Situate and in Hingham and throughout the county. And then we'll go up to the Berkshires. We'll go up to the North Shore. We'll go everywhere in the, in the Commonwealth and beyond. We have to, because that's what Democrats do. We work together. We are better together. We need to continue to have the eyes on the prize. I'm here today to, to thank Labor. I'm a, I'm a Labor mayor. I always have been. And, you know, we have some wonderful organizations here. The Mass Nurses and SEIU were walking with the delegation of myself and Congressman Lynch and Good Sam just the other day. Good Samaritan will stay open. It has to stay open. It's in Brockton, but it's a trauma center that impacts the region. But my, uh, my dad's mother came over from Ireland, Ann Hunt O'Sullivan. She came over from, the, from Mayo up in the west, from Ballyhonis. My nana got out of school in the sixth grade, but she was a hard worker. When she came to Brockton, and, and Senator Creed knew my grandmother very well, she worked in the factories, and she would always tell me a story. Bobby, I was working in a small factory in Brockton, and on a Thursday, I got people together during lunch, and I said, we're going to organize, we're going to create a union. And when my nana went back to work on Friday, they said, get the hell out of here, you don't work here anymore. And that's the fact. But our brave men and women that go to work each and every day are what is America was built upon. So I just want to thank Labor right now. But I also want to thank our federal delegation. Because it trickled down from Washington to 
to our delegation and the hardworking men and women in the administration of Beacon Hill, and then the 45 School Street City Hall in Brockton. So every April I go in and I see the federal delegation. I go to D.C. And two years ago I met with Congressman Lynch, and he was born in Selby, but he easily could have been born in the city of Brockton, no doubt about it. The guy gets it, he fights every day. Fight, fight, fight. But I said to Congressman, this American rescue money, thank God for Joe Biden, thank God for the Democrats. This is a game changer for us here in Brockton. I said, but I have a humble ask. We have an east side pool, it's called the Cosgrove Pool, named after the first Marconian to die in World War II. It was built in the 60s and it's in deplorable shape. And I've dedicated three million of ARPA to make that reimagined, to repurpose, so the boys and girls in Brockton can swim and have a splash park and enjoy it. And he said, May I learn how to swim in Southie at a municipal pool? I'm going to support you. How much do you need? In addition to the ARPA, I said, I need another three million from the omnibus. And then I went to see Eddie Markey, and he said to me the same thing. I learned how to swim in a municipal pool. How much do you need, Bob? I need another three million bucks. And then we said the same to Senator Warren. Guess what? We got three million bucks from Arthur, and three million bucks from President Biden's omnibus. And this coming summer, we're going to have a brand new pool in the city of Boston. The thing about this, the families and the boys and girls are going to be swimming in that pool because that's the beach for a lot of people in Brockton that don't have the means to go down to, to Hull or Nantasket or Cape Cod. That's the beach. But guess what? There's Democrats, Republican, Independent, and the world's going to be using that pool, right? It doesn't matter. It's not a party. It's a pool. But it's because of the hard work of Democrats that it made it a reality. So I'm here today as a Democrat, as a guy that's just saying thank you to John Walsh and his mission. I want to thank the Walsh family. But we need to roll up the sleeves. And as Nana used to say to me, Bobby, keep the eyes on the prize. Don't listen to the naysayers and fight, fight, fight. And that's what we're going to do. Let's keep going. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Just want to acknowledge the crowd we have here. Um, SEIU Media League President Tom McKeever is here. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to move the stage around to try to make some people are trying to get things done here. Um, I'd like to introduce Representative Joan Pacino, who is a fearless leader in the energy, green energy movement of the state. Uh, thank you. Representative Joan Thank you, Senator Timmelson, for letting me go first. I have to scoot to a funeral. Uh, are you inspired? Yes. Yes? yes. I need to hear it. Hello, Plymouth County. Are you inspired? Okay, good. You've heard a lot about the issues on the federal, on the state level. You've heard a lot of inspirational comments. Now, here's my challenge to you, my call to action. What are you going to do about it? We have seven seats that are open in Plymouth County, and I'm looking at my good friend, Dylan Fernandez, who is stepping out of one of them, and hopefully into a Senate seat. My good friend, Josh Cutler, walked away. I feel like Becky Coletta is in this room. Yes, no, raise your hand, yay. How about, how about Michelle Badger? For the person over in the back, we have an opportunity. And I love coming here. I love seeing all of you. I love my job. And when I first stepped forward to lead 3rd Plymouth District, you all embraced me. You have to put together a team. You have, oh, quick shout out. My team's over here, Rich Fitzpatrick, my husband, John Harry, Dan Powers, Ellen Whalen in the back. Fantastic people who took a chance on me and who said, we're gonna do what it takes. We're going to knock doors. We're going to send postcards. The dreaded, we're gonna phone bank and make phone calls. We're gonna stand out. This was advice that Senator Markey gave me myself. It's raining, what do I do, Senator? He says, Joan, go get your umbrella, go get your sign, stand on a street corner and wave at the crowd. Do you know, to this day, there are still people who come up to me in situate and say, I voted for you because I thought, you really wanted it. That's what it takes. It takes coordinated campaigns, like all of you from all of the different Democratic town committees, to come together to meet people like me, to meet people like Becky, Michelle, and to say, all right, 
I am going to help you in your campaign. I'm going to do the other dreaded word, fundraise. We have seven seats. We have some wonderful women candidates who have already stepped forward. Ladies, we need a little help getting them across the channel. Kathy Lanatra and I don't want to be the only two Democratic women on the South Shore. Seventeen women are ready for the reason how to stop in the caucus. And we love our good guys. We love our good gentlemen over here. But we want some more women, some smart, savvy, talented women that have walked up there. As I started out with, I love my job. But here's the thing. I can't do it alone. I am just the person, it is representative government, I am just the person who steps forward and says, I'm willing to go into the State House every day and do this for all of you. You pull your papers, you need a team, and what we really need as we build the team is to have that coordinated campaign. We've already heard from Steve Kerrigan, he previewed a little of that. We are extraordinarily grateful to the Walsh family um, who are going to help fund some people to actually learn how to do this and to have young people here. We have young Democrats who are sitting with me as well. But it takes each and every one of you, and I'm looking out across this room and I'm thinking to myself, I would never have known you if I hadn't stepped forward. Each and every one of you embraced me. I'm asking you to embrace the next generation. So when the party calls, when Plymouth County calls and says, Becky Coletta needs someone to hold signs. What are you going to do? Are you going to go and stand and hold signs with her? If she needs phone banking, are you guys going to go and actually do the phone bank? Are you all going to write a check for a Democrat in this room? And uh, none of this, uh, I'll write a check for 100 bucks for the guys and only 50 for the women. You pick your candidate, and I challenge everyone in this room to write a check to your candidate today and double it, because that's what it takes to get started. As I said, I love this job. I can't do this without you. Kathy can't do this without you. You need to get reelected, and we have seven seats, seven chances to send Democrats back on Beacon Hill and make sure that the people who represent us actually reflect all of the amazing values that you heard so eloquently about today. I apologize I have to run. Hopefully you were inspired. I don't see checkbooks out, but I'm trusting that you're all going to go on down the road, act good, and take care of that and fully move the road. Thank you so much, everyone. It's great to see you. Thank you, Representative. Thank you so much. Inspiring. Um, I'd like to announce next to uh, uh, Senator from Milton, uh, Walter Timothy. Please come up, please. Thank you very much. And uh, it might be good afternoon at this point, but uh, good morning. Good morning, and thank you very much. First of all, to the Walsh family. Coleman, thank you. Thank you very much to each and every one of you for sharing your father and your husband and your brother and your sister. Thank you for sharing John with each and every one of us and the values that he fought for for all of us. Coleman, I remember on, one day on the first floor of the State House, your father was talking to me about how you were applying to Roxbury Latin. And he was so proud and he was so excited about you, what you were doing, what your future was. And that future that he talked about for yourself, he wanted for each and every one of us. He wanted everybody to live with dignity to live with respect for families, working families to have prosperity in their lives and not have to beg, borrow, and choose because of corporate raiders. The same corporate raiders that our Republican nominee embraces. For those very reasons, it's so appropriate today that we honor John Walsh at this breakfast. And one of the cornerstones of the Plymouth County Democratic League is the AFL-CIO. Chrissy Lynch on your leadership. You have pushed for the same values in each and every one of your members here, whether it be our Union Carpenters or North Atlantic Regional States, 88 SEIU, <laughs> the IBEW, and of course our mass nurses, and it goes on, our teachers, our pipe fitters. Those same values that the AFL-CIO pushes, John Walsh pushed, and the Plymouth County Democratic League under your leadership, George. 
So it's my honor to be here today with my colleagues from the legislature and fight for the very values that John Walsh fought for and to keep fighting for them. If we stay together, there is nothing that can stop us. So I know I speak for John Keenan and Mark Pacheco and Mike Brady and Joe Moschino and Kathy Lenatra and our federal delegation and Bob Creeden and Bob Sullivan and John Buckley when I say to you and each and every one of you that we are in it to win it. We're here until November and just think about this. In partnership with our unions and the Plymouth County Democratic League and Democrats all around the state, we are a beacon for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And on a solemn note, a year and a day ago yesterday, we lost a great trade unionist and a great Democrat who I know John Walsh knew. Ryle Rhodes. So to our union carpenters, thank you for sharing John with us. To Joe and Dennis and Steve Tian and each and every union carpenter, thank you for what Ryle did for all of us and our values. We got God bless Ryle Rhodes and thank you all very much. Thank you, Senator. Great job. As we talk about organizing and coming together, uniting. Uh, to Plymouth County um, behind our candidates, uh, right? This person here is a person we all need to come together, uh, work hard for. Uh, uh, Representative Dylan Fernandez, who is running for state senate, um, really need to help him. So go ahead. Thank you, George. Good to be with you. I'm Dylan Fernandez. I'm running for state senate in the Plymouth and Barnstable district. Shout out to Plymouth in the house. We got Kingston in the house. We got Pembroke in the house. We got Plimpton in the house. Um, it would be an honor to represent you. I'm, I'm the current state rep uh, in Falmouth, been serving for for seven years. And actually, John Walsh was the first person who took a meeting with me after I graduated from college with a poli sci degree, which is a really lucrative degree to graduate college from. And and John took a, a, a meeting with me. He didn't know who I was. I was just a, a bright-eyed 22-year-old kid. And he took an hour out of his day to talk with me about, uh, about job prospects, about how to get involved, how to, how to organize. This is someone who was Deval Pactor's campaign manager, the head of the Democratic Party, spending an hour with a recent college graduate. It just shows how decent of a man he was, how he treated everyone with dignity and respect. And those are the values that we as Democrats carry forward in our lives, and it's reflected in our policies. So with those values, and because you guys elected Democrats, we've been able to pass the farthest reaching climate legislation in the country here in Massachusetts. We are the, we are the first, and I see Senator Chico right here, we're the first in the nation to go forward with offshore wind, and now 400,000 homes by the end of the year will be powered by clean energy, constructed by good paying union jobs right here in the Commonwealth. Because we elected Democrats with those values, we passed a Student Opportunity Act, a billion dollar investment in our public schools, paid for, by the way, from a millionaire's tax that all of you supported, so that those at the very, very top can also pay their fair share in our Commonwealth. And if it wasn't for you uh, electing Democrats, we wouldn't have been able to pass the Roe Act, ensuring that women have access to reproductive freedom here in Massachusetts. Our Republican governor vetoed that legislation, and then Democrats in the legislature, we overrode that veto. We passed the Roe Act 2.0, further expanding access, and not only that, but protecting providers who give care to women seeking refuge out of state from Republican uh, legislatively run states. So, thank you for that. And look, I'll just end by saying, I also know we have work to do, right? We have a housing crisis that is making it too hard for too many to afford the roof over their heads. We need child care for women and working families so they don't have to choose between child care and a job. Uh, we need to pass the wage theft legislation and finally get that done and support our friends in labor. So, Look, we have a lot we need to do, but this is Massachusetts. When we lead, the rest of the nation follows, whether that's pulling 12 colonies into a revolution, or going first on health care, going first to say you can love 
who you love. We can do big things when Democrats lead here in Massachusetts. So I'm going to need your help. Please sign up, DylanFernandez.com. Sign up, help us on our, on our campaign to keep uh, Plymouth County blue. Thank you. Next up is who is the founder of the Plymouth County Democratic Register a deed for John Blackley. Thank you, John. Hello, everyone. I want to uh, thank everyone for the great words they said about our friend John Walsh. I'm going to go in a little different direction. Um, I grew up in Abington with John, and long before the presidential politics and Senator Markey's campaign and Duval's campaign and John being chair of the league and by the way we ran a coordinated campaign that year and that's how you win in Plymouth County by running a coordinated campaign. <laughs> but John Walsh put his heart into every campaign he was involved in and Donna and Coleman know that best. But, but there was a time way back uh, in the 80s, and it was a real, very serious, hot-button issue, an override vote for a sewer line in West Abington. And you may not think that is important with all these things we're talking about, but to the people of West Abington, it was extremely important because their homes had been built with improper, improper septic systems, so there was an override vote. And John coordinated that effort. Uh, in fact, for all you technology experts, we used four uh, plywood boards, four by eight plywood boards, put the voting list on the boards, and called all our friends to come in and call their friends to get people out to vote. And um, with a landline, if you can believe that. <laughs> but I guess my point is, John's legacy is going to be how he knew that people have to connect with people. You have to call your friends who have to reach their friends. And if we do that this election cycle, everybody will win. And that will be the memory that I'll carry of John forever in my life. Thank you very much. Everybody. Plymouth County Commissioner Greg Hanley is here today. Um, also, I'd like to hear from some Democratic town cheers. Uh, hear what their struggles are going to be the coming up uh, in the 2024 cycle. I'd like to introduce uh, one of our board members, the Democratic Chair of uh, Middleborough, Rich Young. Thank you, everybody. Um, I know the speaking arrangement is long, but it's long because of all of you. You're the one who stand up and constantly elect Democrats in Plymouth County, so thank you. Um, I'm the proud Democratic chair of Millboro, which is an extremely conservative town, but time and time again, Democrats will win. Mark Pacheco always carries Middleboro. John Buckley always carries Middleboro. Uh, Secretary Galvin always carries Middleboro because they recognize the hard work that they do. I had the great opportunity to meet John as a Democratic chair, he always made time for local Democratic chairs. Originally, I thought it was because I was a Spelman graduate and he was being nice to me, but it's no, that was John's way. Right. Same thing. There have been more Spelman mentions tonight than anyone. I'm sorry, Greg. Greg went to Archbishop Williams, so. Um, but what I'm here to say is as we talk about the federal elections, the national elections, the state elections, as a Democratic chair, please don't forget local elections. We need to make sure we instill Democratic values in the finance committees, in the selectmen, in the city councilors, because time and time again, issues are springing up that are causing problems. There's talk of banning books. There's talk of problems with unions. There are consistently time and time again when we see these issues at the local level because people don't pay attention. People let anybody run. Don't do that. The 
put in perspective how the democratic values come into play. As a small town, I have many hats in that town. One of the hats I'm proudest of is chair of the school committee. In Middleborough, we built a brand new school. We built that school entirely with union labor. Yeah, yeah. Last, at the end of last school year, we negotiated every single one of our union contracts. We did so without strike or problems. The longest a contract negotiation went was under five months. The shortest was two weeks. It's because we, we have an open relationship, are transparent, and meet regularly with our unions and have conversations. And finally, per perhaps the most important thing that I saw as a member of the school committee, we stood up for the rights of our LGBTQ plus students <laughs> by following Massachusetts law and not allowing the students to walk into a classroom denying their existence. John Walsh told us that be in a national election, a state election, a federal election, or a local election, you win by going precinct to precinct, ward to ward. And the most important reason that local elections are important is because out of local elections will come the next Elizabeth Warren, the next Senator Markey, and dare I say it, the next John Walsh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rick. I move this program along so we can get to the mix of the candidates. Um, so, Susan May, please come up. She's Democratic Chair at Pembroke. She has a few words to say. Um, thank you, Yale. Good afternoon, and thank you, George, for giving me this opportunity um, today. My name is Sue Renee, and I'm a proud Democrat and the DTC Chair for Pembroke. Thank you to the Walsh family for sharing John with us. I am using notes today, just like President Biden, and I'm here with you to share a little bit of what's happening in Pembroke, the serious political challenges we are facing, and the opportunities to make a difference. Our school committee chair tried to cha change the existing policy for political and social advocacy to remove the pride flag and pins from school classrooms based on religious beliefs. The attempt to change the policy brought about substantial public support to keep the policy the same, and thankfully, the motion was not approved. <laughs> and just like we heard, similar events of this kind may be happening in your community as well. Last week, the school committee meeting the Pembroke PTA president presented the vote of the teacher's vote of no confidence in the school committee chair. This action speaks loudly that the teachers are not agreeing with the direction of the present chair and they're trying to and how they're trying to take over our schools. The situation has encouraged a few people to pull papers and to run for up, upcoming open seats, especially for the school committee. In total, we have six open seats for town committees. Any new candidates for these positions will be running against mega incumbents. This is my ask of you today. The Pembroke DTC needs financial and practical support. In-person training, guidance, feet on the ground, financial resources. You name it, we need help with it. If you are able to help us, Please reach out by email or speak with me directly. Our town election is May 18th, and we are hoping for a blue wave to sweep all the open seats. I'm excited to be part of the community and to get this work done. And I am sending all my love and thanks to Table 23 and to John Bowes for all of his hard work and support of everything that we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you very much. Also, we have here a board member as a Democratic chair from Wareham, uh, John Johnny, who does amazing work on Wareham. He's been doing it for many, many years. Thank you.
Thank you, George. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Coleman. Happy birthday. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see so many Dems gathered together this morning to honor our dear friend, John Walsh, and to celebrate the efforts of the Plymouth County Democratic League, which meant so much to John's grassroots philosophy. We've heard many speakers talk about that today. I feel privileged to be asked to speak here this morning. But before I get started, I want to thank Senator Mark Pacheco <clears throat> for a lifetime of service, decades of friendship, and I wish him all the best in his new role as a national activist. Congratulations, Mark. John Walsh and I met in the early 1990s when the PCLD was waning. He was one of the primary engineers of our comeback. I had just become a new chair of the Wayham Democratic Town Committee and I was running for state representative. John was 30 years old at the time. How apropos, Coleman. He had the wisdom and the intuition of a veteran political pundit. That combined with his Irish charm, made it impossible ever to say no to his requests. I remember once that he called me on a Thursday afternoon to ask if the Wayham Democratic Town Committee could get together 50 people in a room at 9 a.m. on Saturday. In other words, can we fill a room in 48 hours? When I repeated that request to my wife, Jane, she said, that's a big ask, to which I responded, do you want me to say no to John Walsh? <laughs> and that's how the Wayham Democratic Town Committee, the Plymouth County Democratic League, met Deval Patrick, <clears throat> the future, at that time, governor of Massachusetts. Another time, John made a last minute appearance at one of our caucuses to introduce a candidate for the United States Senate, Elizabeth Warren, on one of her first campaign stops. Whatever John asked, one simply could not say no. Whether it was knocking on doors in New Hampshire, organizing Plymouth County Democratic League's annual thanks labor event, collecting signatures for nomination papers, or traveling to Ohio to work on John Kerry's presidential campaign. John was a driving force be behind getting like-minded people to participate in democratic causes. He was truly inspirational because of his compelling persuasion. <clears throat> Excuse me. I lost a page here. Because of his compelling persuasiveness, Wayham Democratic Town Committee got onto the Plymouth County Democratic League's bandwagon in a big way. His ideas for grassroots campaigning and his organization of coordinated campaign headquarters throughout the county were groundbreaking at the time and proved instrumental in increasing the number of elected Democratic officials at both the municipal and the county levels. John parlayed those skills as chairman of the Massachusetts Democratic State Committee and as campaign coordinator of numerous state and federal campaigns of which you've all heard about tonight. Wayham's Bob Joy followed in John's footsteps and served as the chair of the Plymouth County Democratic League for four years, along with Wayham's Bill Scott as Plymouth County's Democratic League's president, excuse me, treasurer. Bill, could you stand up and be recognized, please? With John's help, we established a coordinated campaign headquarters in Wayham with grant money funded by the Plymouth County Democratic League and the State Committee. When John lent his support <clears throat> to what used to be a local Wayham Democratic League lobster bake, we were able not only to attract local and Plymouth County candidates, but statewide and congressional candidates, which increased our ability to help raise funds to support those candidates and created a role model for other counties throughout the Commonwealth. Most notably, however, 
Throughout his rising notoriety, John was still John, a friend who would always return a phone call and be there for a fellow Democrat. I want to thank you all for being here, not only to honor John's memory, but to help us continue his legacy and the tradition of his unique style of grassroots campaigning. Honoring Coleman. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate John's memory. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Now I'm going to get to the candidates that are running here. So we're probably going to try to go through rapid fire through how many candidates we can get to them speak. And first up is Becky Coletta, who is running for state representative. Great candidate. Hi. It's nice to see so many people have stayed this long. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this to work. I'm excited to see the support for the Plymouth County Democratic League in honor of John Walsh, who never seemed to miss a chair's breakfast. You know who else didn't miss a chair's breakfast? John Buckley. <laughs> Always shows up. Shows up for them, shows up for PCDL. So thank you, John, too. Two Johns. John Walsh was a great supporter of grassroots, um, local organizing. And this is local politics at its best. This is when we come together, we work together, and we bring change. I'm in this race because of my work in local politics over the last 20 years. First time I went to a PCDL breakfast was with Kathy Egan from Hanson when I was on the Hanson Democratic Town Committee. And I'm pretty sure John Walsh and John Buckley were both there. I've, um, I want to put my work in town politics and local politics and bring that to the State House. I've been in uh, elected positions at the town level, appointed positions at the regional level. I currently serve proudly as the president of the Old Colony Planning Council. Um, I think Mary Waldron is here in the audience. And last year I um, was a staff member with the Joint Committee on Labor and Workforce Development at the State House. My work as a Democratic Town Committee member in Pembroke and Hanson tells me how important this league and everyone in here who is part of Democratic Town Committees and labor unions and everyone who supports local candidates. A lot of times in Massachusetts we get people who think they're Democrats in the Democratic state and the local work doesn't matter as much. And it's really hard sometimes. In Pembroke we win the um, federal elections, but we have a hard time at the local level because people don't show up. And it's because we need to get more organized and we get more, need to get more people out there. So I'm hoping my campaign isn't just about me, but it's about activating local Democrats in our district. Um, I, my issues are issues that we've heard about today, workers. You know, whether it's workforce housing, whether it's wage theft, whether it's off-site prefab, there's a lot of work that's done at the State House to support the working middle class in the state. And I want to be part of that. We also need to work on coastal and environmental resiliency in our district. We have a lot of coastline in the district and we have a lot of natural resources and ponds inland. And then lastly, I really want to work on economic development. We, as Plymouth County, when we talk about economic development, it's not a one-town issue, it's a regional issue. How do we bring more of what's great about Massachusetts to the South Shore? And I want to be part of that conversation. I was really grateful for the support from Joe Moschino and from uh, Rep. Lenatra and the other people that I hope to go back to the State House and work with and um, help make South Shore a preeminent part of the economic development story of Massachusetts. So I'm just asking for your help. We, as our chair in Pembroke alluded to, we have some real issues in our district. We have the MAGA Republicans are really hoping to get a foothold in Plymouth County and in Pembroke. And we need your help to make sure that doesn't happen. I'll work my butt off. I will be out there between now and November to make sure that we try to keep this seat blue and that I can proudly serve in Josh Cutler's footsteps, and um, meanwhile, as we all say, get to work. Our next up, we've got about 10 minutes here, so next up we have Sean Murphy, who's running 
the governor's council. Uh, thank you, George, and to the league for allowing me to the opportunity to introduce myself. Um, first, I'd like to ask, um, sorry, uh, thank organized labor. I'm a former union, union member myself. Uh, in fact, my oldest son, when he was born, I was covered, was covered by uh, uh, union medical. So it was really, really important uh, for union uh, organized labor. Uh, and I'm a big supporter. Uh, my name is Sean Murphy. I'm an attorney. Uh, I'm a Navy veteran. Uh, I'm a father of three kids. Uh, you know, I, I'm running for governor's council because I really want to ensure that we have qualified judges for above all, uh, but I also want to ensure that the judges are sensitive and compassionate to organized labor, to veterans, to families, and to the youth. And I just ask for you to vote on September 3rd. I really appreciate it. I won't take up any more time because I know we're at the level now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Next up, we please Michelle Bradley, who's running for state representative. I know I'm between you and the rest of your Saturday, but I'm Michelle Badger and I'm running for state rep. I've been on uh, in the first Plymouth district. I've been, been on the Plymouth School Committee for the last 13 years and I'm currently the chair. And I'm really excited to take all the knowledge that I've gained over those 13 years and take it to the state level and advocate for Plymouth. For me, the most important pieces are advocacy for uh, everybody in the county. What do they need? Our accessibility. Uh, how do we make sure that our our immigrant community has access to everything that they need? How do we make sure our seniors have access? And of course, uh, affordability. We all know we have a housing crisis here and we need to find ways for all of our community members to be able to thrive and live in the communities they want to. But we're really here for John and John's family. And I have to say that being in a room with John, you felt like you were the only person and you were just as important to him as everybody else, anybody else. And your issue was just as important. And I you know, will never forget, <laughs> sorry, the, the opportunities I had to work with him. To do things for the Plymouth Democratic Ta Town Committee, to do different things for campaigns and knock those doors. But when we had a problem or if we had a question, we were right in front of him and he didn't have the thousands of other things you knew he had in his brain. So I'm grateful for all that John taught me and I look forward to putting those grassroots efforts in place for my campaign. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Joe. Uh, next, we have Joe Pacheco running for State Senate. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Uh, this is probably the first time in my life where when I talk fast, you'll appreciate it because I've been told my whole career I talk fast. Uh, so I first want to recognize uh, the legacy of John Walsh. Uh, similar to many speakers before us today, when I was a young candidate at the age of 21, John made sure he made time for me as, at his Abington insurance office to sit down, give me some pointers, and regardless of the title he held, uh, he was always gracious, kind, generous with his time, his talents, and to the, to the whole Walsh family. Uh, thank you for being here, and thank you, as a few other folks said, for lending him to us for so long. We appreciate it. While I also have the microphone, I would be remiss if I didn't offer my sincere gratitude to Senator Pacheco. Uh, I can't say he's retiring because he tells me there's much more to come, but the Senator has been somebody I've learned from my, for my entire life, and I just would ask you to join me in a round of applause for the Senator. So, I won't give you the hard sell today that's going to happen over the next nine or so months, but for the last 17 years I've had the distinct honor to serve as selectman of my hometown, hometown in Rainham. I became the youngest selectman in Rainham history, the first Portuguese American selectman in Rainham history, and the fourth generation of my family to serve the town of Rainham. Not being my first event at the PCDL, I've had the chance to meet a lot of you over the years. I'm excited for the coming months to campaign. I would ask for your consideration in September and again in November. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you, Joe. Up next, we have Rhonda Nyman, who is running for Planning County Commissioner. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thanks for hanging in there. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to see so many familiar and friendly faces. Uh, before I begin with my remarks, I would just like to say thank you for lending John. John was a part of my whole family's campaign. Whenever we ran for office, John was always there. Might not always agree with him, and when I didn't, it, the outcome wasn't very good. So thank you for lending to him to our family. 
For those of you I have not had the privilege to meet, my name is Rhonda Nyman, and I am a candidate for Plymouth County Commissioner. I'd like to begin by telling you a little bit about myself. Hanover has been my hometown for over 50 years, a place where my late husband, Bob, and I raised our two daughters, Christy and Kara, in a place now that they call home with their family. When Bob was elected to the Hanover Board of Selectmen, the Hanover School Committee, and then as state representative, it wasn't until then that I got to see firsthand how government and elected officials can really make a difference in people's lives and how good politicians can fix problems and right the wrongs. This is where my passion for public service began and still continues. I am a former state representative, current member and vice chair of the Hanover Select Board, a proud member of the Plymouth County Advisory Board, delegate to the Old Colony Planning Council in Brockton, and the governor, thank you, Mary, and the Governor Affairs Officer for the Plymouth County Sheriff's Office. I'm running for Plymouth County Commissioner because I believe experience, my experience and years of service governing at the state, local, and county level is essential to moving the county forward and meeting the challenges ahead. With that being said, I would be honored to serve as a member of the Plymouth County Commissioners, and if elected, I promise I will use my experience and passion to work as hard as I can to make Plymouth County the envy of Massachusetts. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Okay, so we, we literally have three minutes left, so if everybody can just give me one minute to pitch, then I'm pretty great. All right, I'll talk quick. I just am uh, pr proud to be here. John Walsh, uh, when I first started out politics, was uh, sage advice, and he challenged me to work harder. Work harder to impress him that I, I fit the bill. My name is Scott Becky. I'm running for Plymouth County Commissioner. I am uh, currently a practicing attorney specializing in bankruptcy and immigration. I'm a retired police sergeant from the town of Plymouth, and I'm a retired gunnery sergeant of Marines. Currently, I'm also working part-time on the ambulance. Uh, my life has been a commitment to service, and my candidacy for Plymouth County Commissioner is a continuation of that commitment to service. I've served my country, I've served my community, and I hope to serve you as the next Plymouth County Commissioner. I think it's very important that we bring a Democratic majority back to the Plymouth County Commissioner, something that's been lacking for a while. <laughs> my four points for my, in my candidacy, public safety. There's been a proposal for a Plymouth County fire training facility for over 20 years. I want to see that enacted. Education. I want to conduct a feasibility study for a Plymouth County Agricultural School to see if it's a feasible thing that the county can participate in to help the 27 communities. Currently, if you have somebody in an ag, you're paying, your, your town is paying $20,000 to either Norfolk or Bristol for them to be educated. Where many of our communities are right to farm, so I would like to see if that's feasible for Plymouth County to, to uh, open an agricultural school. I'm not looking to spend $15 million on a school, I just want to see if it's feasible for the county. Uh, green energy, solar, huge believer, net zero, and monetizing the county's resources and developing new revenue streams, I have to stop, um, but I can need your help. If you haven't signed my papers, I'd appreciate it. Um, you can find me at, at voteforbecky.org, scott.becky at gmail.com, or uh, I can see me and I'll give you my card. But I want to give the other person the time to talk. So thank you. We have to cover this council, uh, Dave Resovitz. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, Dave Resovitz, I'm running for Governor's Council, not County Commissioner. Uh, been a lawyer, uh, born and raised in Brockton, been a lawyer since 1997. And I um, quickly became active in the uh, Pilgrim Bar Advocates Organization right around when we had the Republican Governor Romney come into office. So I had to uh, find myself fighting in the State House to keep the Public Defenders Organization alive because it meant so much to me to, uh, you know, help the plight of the indigent defendant. And that's where it started for me. I was the youngest uh, president of the Plymouth County Bar Association, the oldest bar association in America. And then uh, in 2009, I was appointed by Governor Deval Patrick to his Judicial Nominating Committee. Uh, there I really learned about what, uh, how important our judiciary is and I want to keep doing that work. So I'm hoping to get back to work on that, representing the 2nd District on the Governor's Council. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, our, our current uh, 
County Commissioner Greg Hanley, please. Just like the ballot for the last to speak, but they say the best for last. So thank you all for sticking here. This is so appropriate, named the first annual John Walsh Plymouth County Democratic Breakfast. Can I acknowledge all the DTC chair people in the room? Because this breakfast has always been the main staple of this party. I want to thank you for supporting me in the past. Now that we've made Plymouth County sexy again, we have a lot of uh, people that want to run for it, but I want to close with this. I apprenticed under John Walsh. In 1996, I was a laborer in Quincy Local 133 Labors. Your father came in as an organizer, and he came in to talk about a ballot question. From there, I launched my city council uh, career, wrote the responsible employer ordinance for the city of Quincy. I honor uh, Senator Pacheco and the Pacheco Law because that law helped push labor forward. Your father is a hero of mine, and I remember those days when you used to have the high top sneakers and the shorts down your ankles. And I want to thank you and your, and your mom for the gift of your father. It's right here. March 10th, if you want to hear more about the Hanley campaign, come down to J.P. Ryan's. We have a St. Patrick's Day celebration for all of you in the room that did to stay to the better end. Did I do all right, George? All right. Five hundred bucks. We went past one, right? I'm working. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for wrapping that up, and thank you very much for all your support. It's deeply appreciated. Have a good day.